Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create this choker with this pendant. It's super easy to do. So there is going to be some polygon modeling that I'm going to be doing in Blender. But if you understand polygon modeling principles, you can create this pendant in Cinema 4D or any program. But if you don't want to create the pendant, then you can check the timestamps in this video and jump straight to Marvelous Designer. And then just download my project file and I've actually included this pendant as an OBJ that you can just bring directly into Marvelous Designer. So this tutorial is going to be really easy to do and at the end you'll basically have this choker with some jewelry on it. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start with the default cube. While it's selected, press tab to go into edit mode. Now I want to go to loop cut and create a loop cut like this. Go to my edge select and go to select box. Now I just want to select the top edge and the bottom edge. Then go to scale. And I just want to scale it up like this. So I'm scaling both the top and the bottom just to create this diamond shape. Now you can obviously create whatever you want. Now I'm going to press tab to go out of edit mode and I'm going to go to scale and just scale this in a little bit. Like that should be fine. And maybe down a little bit as well. All right, and just move this up above my grid. Let me just scale it like that. I'm going to press tab again to go back into edit mode. Now these additional lines that were generated, I'm, a, I'm on uh, edge select. I'm going to hold on shift and select the back then press delete on my keyboard and I want to dissolve these edges just so it makes the surface nice and clean. Now I'm going to go to face select and I'm going to select the front like this and I'm going to go to inset faces. So now I'm going to inset this inwards and now I'm going to, you can click over here to extrude. I'm going to press the shortcut E and move this back. And then I'm going to press R just to scale, or you can click on scale over there, just to scale it like this. Then I'm going to press E again to extrude this out. Now I'm going to go to bevel and just bevel this, just to give it a nice hard edge for our diamond shape. So I just want to reduce the overall thickness of this pendant. So I'm going to go to face select, select the back over here, and I'm going to press my shortcut W to move, or you can click on move and just move this in. And now I'm going to go to Edge Select. And over here, if you press the shortcut Shift and Alt, I can select this entire edge loop. Otherwise, you'll need to select an edge and then hold on Shift and do that manually. But the shortcut is Shift, Alt, and then left click. And then I'm going to just move this back. All right, just to create a chamfered edge over there. So there we go. It's low poly. It was very simple to do. So this is going to be the pendant. So the last detail I'm going to add on here, you'll see if I go out of uh, edit mode, you can see these edges are quite hard on this diamond. So I'm going to press tab again to go back in. I'm going to go to my bevel, hold on shift and alt to select this entire region. And I'm going to apply a bevel over here. So while I'm dragging this out, if I scroll on my mouse wheel, you can see I can add more, more of these loop cuts on here. So now if I press tab to go out, you can see it just makes this edge look a little bit softer. So I'm going to press tab to go back in. So now what I want to do is, and here's a nice shortcut as well, if I go to face select and select this face because I want to select this entire diamond. If you hold on control and on your numpad you press plus, you can increase your selection. And you can see that's under this option over here, which is select more. So it's control numpad plus. So I'll do that again. So I've got my entire diamond selected. Now I'm going to right click and go to separate by selection. So it separated this off. So if I press tab, you can see I've got two separate uh, objects over here. So we've got the diamond. I can move that around on its own. And we've got the casing for this diamond as well. So now a nice tip uh, before we head over to Marvelous Designer is to assign some materials on here because you'll be able to actually change those material selections in Marvelous Designer. So for the pendant, I'm going to go to Material Properties, click on Plus, and let's just choose a base color, maybe make this a darker gray like that. I'm also going to click on my viewport shading so I can see my materials. And for the ruby, click on New. Let's make this black. All right, I'll bring up some of the metallic, decrease some of the roughness just so it's nice and shiny. All right, so there we got our pendant. Now we just need a little bit of like a, a lock or a hook at the top so that it looks like it's actually attached to the choker. So to do that, press Shift A and we're just going to use a basic torus. So I'm going to scale this down. Just click on scale, scale this down, move this up and rotate it like this. And I'm going to hold on control so I rotate in increments 
you'll see that there's an increment value there in the corner. I rotated that exactly at 90 degrees and just snap to the front view over here. And then uh, this one I'm going to scale it just like this. Right, and click on new and I'm going to make this darker. And then Shift D is to duplicate or Control Control C, Control V. I like to use Shift D, it's just quicker. Go to my rotate, hold on Control, rotate in increments. I want to rotate this 90 degrees. Here we go. And go to scale and scale it out like this. And voila, we have created a pendant. So just to make sure this entire pendant is one OBJ because it's easier to work with, select all of the pieces. So we've got the torus, this cube and this cube. Now you can, before you do this, actually save this as a project file. So save as and just save that as a project file. And then to basically group this as one object, you want to press the shortcut key control J. So I press control J and it groups it into one object. So now this is what we're going to be exporting out of the program. So just select your object over here, double click, and I'll just name this pendant, press enter, and let's go to file, export OBJ, and just save this to your desktop. So I'm just going to name this pendant, click on export, these are my export settings, I keep everything default, and just click on export OBJ. So now we can head over to Marvelous Designer. Okay, so first things first in Marvelous Designer, go to preferences, gizmo, and select local coordinate. Uh, it's just going to make your life a lot easier when we're working in the 3D workspace. And then you want to load in this project file. So you can check the link in the description or top comment. I provided a link to this project file. Then just go to open project. You'll see over here it's called female project file. Click on open and leave everything default. Click on OK and we can get started. So let's create the choker pattern. So hold the left mouse button down over here. Select rectangle. Left click. It brings up this box. Type in 150 for the width and 17 for the height. Now over here in your object browser, go to fabric. I'll double click over here and just call this choker fabric, press enter. And under color, I'm going to make this a darker gray. So we need two pieces of this fabric for the choker. So I'm gonna to go to transform pattern, select this, then right click and go to symmetric pattern with sewing. So this creates a symmetric pattern. So whenever, I, whatever I do on one side will happen to the other side of this pattern as well. Now over here, select thin textured surface, so this icon, so that you can see one side of this pattern is a lot darker than the other, and that's the normal, and that should be facing the character. So in the 3D workspace, just left click to select this pattern, move it behind the character's neck like this, and in order for us to get this normal to face our character, just right click and go to flip horizontally, and there we go. Now I'm also going to move this back. So now to sew these pieces together, just go to segment sewing and sew this side onto the side. All right, and then sew this side onto the side as well. All right, so perfect. Now before I actually sew this together, let me go to transform pattern. Just click and drag to create a selection box over here. And now in my 3D workspace, I want to rotate this pattern like this because I want my seam line to be down the center of the character's face over here. So once that's in position, press spacebar to simulate or click on this icon. And there we go, we've got a choker. So now I'm also gonna just click and drag and make a selection box over this and reduce the particle distance. So this is increasing the quality of the garment. So by reducing this number, it's like you subdividing the mesh. And just press spacebar to simulate that. You can see it got rid of some jagged edges. And now I've got my seam line down the center and that's perfect. So we're going to be gluing and attaching that pendant onto our choker. And now just a quick tip. If you feel like this choker is offset a little bit too much from the character's skin, uh, over here by the object browser, if I just scroll my mouse wheel to scene, and then I left click to select just one of the faces on this character, then right click and select all faces. On the right hand side over here, we have a skin offset option. So by default, that's on three. If you reduce this number, it will reduce the offset of this garment from your character. So just wanted to mention that. So now I want to create some metal clips on this choker to make it appear like it's been, you know, closed. And if I just left click on my garment over here and look at where this blue dot is, I know where I need to create this detail. So there's the blue dot so I can see where the back of this garment is. So I'm going to go to edit pattern, select this line, right click, offset as internal line by a distance of three and click on OK. So because there's symmetric pattern with sewing, it'll create this internal line on the other side automatically. So there we go. And if you 
Don't see these red lines, just hover over here and enable show internal lines. So now what I want to do is, while this is selected, like this, right click and go to cut and sew. So it cuts this piece of fabric off, as you can see, and it sews it back on. Now I can see that this piece of fabric is on this side and this one is on this side. And there we go. So now I'm going to click and drag over the entire choker and I want to add some thickness on here. So I'll put a value of two and press enter. Then I'm going to change this to thick textured surface just so we can see what the garment looks like with some thickness. But for our metal clips, I'm going to select this and hold on shift to select this. I'm going to put this on two comma five and press enter just to offset that thickness a little bit. Then I'm going to select my choker fabric, copy that and just double click on here and call this choker metal clip and press enter. Then I'm going to just change this type from fabric mat to silk and satin and then select these two pieces while holding down shift and change it to this other fabric. So now it gives it the illusion of metal. You can see if I make this a bit lighter, it almost looks like a metal clip on the back. And just creating the illusion of that. All right. And now the last detail I want to add on here is to use some internal lines again. So I'm going to go to edit pattern, select the top of this line, hold on shift and select the bottom. Then right click, go to offset as internal line. And I'm going to do that by a distance of two click on OK and just like we did before while the internal lines are selected right click and go to cut and sew so it cuts it off and sews it back on. Now I'm going to select this choker fabric copy that and just double click over here and call this choker fabric 2. I'm going to go to my transform pattern select this and hold on shift to select all of these pieces and change this to choker fabric 2 then select choker fabric 2 and I can maybe make it a lighter color or a darker color it's up to you. So there we go. We've got our choker created and now we just need to attach that pendant. So now we can import our pendant. So go to file import OBJ. So here's my pendant OBJ. Click on open and I'm going to change my object type to trim. So in earlier versions of Marvelous Designer, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure where it is, but you have to go to file and I think it's import OBJ as trim. But I'm using Marvelous Designer 10 and just the most important thing is this needs to be a trim. You don't want to import an avatar. It has to be a trim in order for this to work correctly. And then over here, I usually have my, my option over here, my scale on 100%. So this will import the, the pendant quite large. Uh, but if you don't want to use auto scale, you can put it on centimeters and then instead of 100%, maybe import it at 20% so that it imports a lot smaller. But I am going to put this on auto scale right at, at 100% and click on OK because there is an object, uh, uh, an option in Marvelous Designer 10 which is this icon that allows you to actually scale the objects uh, within the 3D viewport. But if you don't have this, obviously import it at a, at a smaller scale. So uh, before I do anything, before I actually scale this object because everything is selected right now, on the right hand side under the property editor you can see the weight of this object is 203,000 which is insane. So if this was attached to the choker, that amount of weight would completely pull down this choker into oblivion, right? <laughs> so we want to click on this value and just put the weight on one so that it's actually going to stay in place at the top, right? So put on one and press enter. So I still have my entire object selected. So I'm going to move this up and I'm going to scale this right now. So I'm going to click on this icon and just drag this diagonally. Right, click on there again and just bring it this way so I can see where it is. Let me scale that again. Click on this icon and let's rotate this and move it this way and move it up. Move it up here. Right, and I just want to show you something. If for whatever reason you deselected your OBJ, let's say I'm going to do that right now. Remember, because we have multiple selection sets on here, we have to select each piece. So I would have to left click to select this diamond region, hold down shift to select the outer rim, and select these two rings and then left click to bring the gizmo back up and now I'm moving everything at once again. So let me just scale this down, push this back and now it's just a matter of positioning, uh, positioning this by the seam line over here. Well, you, can, you can place these OBJs wherever you want it to be on the fabric. Right, I'm just positioning this in the center 
and yeah that should be fine and now the next part is to actually glue this onto the garment so while you still have this gizmo selected you'll see that there's an option over here called glue so as soon as I click on that and then I hover over the fabric you can see it's showing me an indication of how it's going to be glued on it doesn't matter how this looks right now just left click and you'll see this icon is, is highlighted that means this is basically glued onto the fabric so now I can move this anywhere on uh, I can move it anywhere within the scene that it's still going to be glued onto this fabric once I simulate this so I'm just going to move it back to the center over here like that all right and we are good to go so I'm just want to make sure the weight is still on one that's perfect now if I press spacebar there we go we've got a pendant that's glued onto this fabric so it's completely dynamic which means that if this fabric had to move this pendant would move with the fabric as well so it's just a really quick and easy way to attach that onto our choker so I actually might make this just a little bit smaller maybe this jewelry is a little bit too big so I'm selecting the outer rim the diamond and these two rings then left click well make sure I'm not in simulation right I had to stop the simulation now left click to bring up the gizmo just make this a little bit smaller so like that's fine remember this is still going to be glued onto the fabric I just need to move it into position And there we go. So press spacebar to simulate. And voila, we have a pendant attached to our choker. Okay, so the tutorial is done, but just to show you how to actually export this out of the program, you would click to create a selection box over your entire pattern like this. And you want to go to File, Export, OBJ Selected. And just save this to a folder. So I created a folder called Choker. Click on Save. All right now import this is very important make sure you've got select all patterns selected and select all graphics and trims so you're basically telling the the program you want to export out your choker and the trims is the pendant so i'm exporting out both of these as one object or as one file uh, so i want this as multiple objects and i'll export it with thickness because we did create some thickness in md and then you want some unified uv coordinates definitely this should always be ticked my centimeters uh, my scale is on centimeters des and at hundred percent and then click on OK. And just to show you, if I go to Blender, File, Import, OBJ, and just go to the folder over here, and just import this OBJ. Let's move this up. There we go. There is the choker with the pendant included as well as one file. All right, or if you want to, uh, you could maybe export it separately. So in that export dialog box, you could deselect select all patterns and just have trims. So it exports out this on its own. And then you could deselect trims and select all patterns. So it just exports the choke on its own. It depends how you want to export it out of the program. But I thought I would just mention that. So that's the end of the tutorial. Let me know what you think. There's so much uh, endless possibilities uh, regarding using glue and OBJs. You can create like a studded choker as well any obj that you create in another program you can attach it onto fabric so the possibilities are endless let me know what you think down in the description below if you enjoyed this did you learn something useful from it and as always thank you so much for the support on this channel you guys are super awesome stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye